On the night of November 19, a drone attack took place in the Bryansk region of Russia. Ukrainian drones struck the 67th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate of the Russian Defense Ministry in the city of Karachivo. The strike caused an explosion and a fire. The information was confirmed by the Ukrainian general staff. It is said that a total of 12 explosions occurred after the strike. The warehouse stores artillery shells, including North Korean-made shells, KB guided aerial bombs, anti-aircraft missiles and shells for multiple rocket launcher systems. Karachev residents reported explosions and detonations, including an alleged attack on a military base, as shared in local chats and reported by Russian media outlet Astra. The town lies more than 100 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Andriy Kovalenko, head of Ukraine's counter-disinformation center at the National Security and Defense Council, claimed the attack targeted the 67th arsenal of Russia's main missile and artillery directorate. Kovalenko did not specify what exactly was used to attack the arsenal, but he added that it had been attacked by drones earlier. The governor of Bryansk Oblast claimed this was a drone attack. As usual, he states that the UAVs were destroyed and there were no casualties or damage. Later, the Russian Ministry of Defense reported that on the morning of November 19, air defense systems allegedly destroyed 12 Ukrainian UAVs over the territory of Bryansk Oblast and one over Belgorod Oblast in the Russian Federation. Ракета как будто туда прилетела. Да нет, это... Там такая только что была полоса, как будто ракета. President Joe Biden has authorized Ukraine to use US-supplied missiles to strike deeper inside Russia, easing limitations on the longer-range weapons as Russia deploys thousands of North Korean troops to reinforce its war, according to a US official and three other people familiar with the matter. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. The official and the others knowledgeable about the matter were not authorized to discuss the U.S. decision publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Zelensky and many of his Western supporters have been pressing Biden for months to allow Ukraine to strike military targets deeper inside Russia with Western-supplied missiles, saying the U.S. ban had made it impossible for Ukraine to try to stop Russian attacks on its cities and electrical grids. His statement came shortly after he posted a message of condolence on Telegram following a Russian attack on a nine-story building that killed at least eight people in the northern city of Sumy, 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. Russia also launched a massive drone and missile attack, described by officials as the largest in recent months, targeting energy infrastructure and killing civilians. The attack came as fears are mounting about Moscow's intentions to devastate Ukraine's power generation capacity before the winter. U.S. approval of Ukraine's use of U.S. long-range weapons has no impact on Germany's refusal to deliver Taurus cruise missiles, a government spokesman said on Monday. 
But Chancellor Olaf Scholz has ruled out providing Taurus long-range cruise missiles, which have a range of up to 500 kilometers and could in theory be used against targets far into Russian territory. The decision allowing Kiev to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. President Joe Biden's move also follows the presidential election victory of Donald Trump, who has said he would bring about a swift end to the war and raised uncertainty about whether his administration would continue the United States' vital military support for Ukraine. Der Bundeskanzler war davon darüber informiert, dass das Ja von Präsident Biden zur Lieferung der Attackhams ist, wie Sie wahrscheinlich nachvollziehen können, auch sehr eng konditioniert, um beispielsweise die Ukraine gerade auch in der Grenzregion Kursk zu unterstützen. Und nein, es hat keine Auswirkungen auf die Entscheidung des Bundeskanzlers. Taurus nicht zu liefern. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has long been a criminal and a murderer, said Bill Browder, founder of Hermitage Capital Management and one of the co-authors of the Magnitsky Act. As he emphasized in an interview with Urantime, Putin is not interested in ending the war with Ukraine. I think Putin was waiting for Donald Trump to be elected to act even more harshly. I am very skeptical about any potential end to the war. I think the war will continue, the businessman warned. In his opinion, Putin has a very strong incentive to negotiate only on his own terms, because his ability to stay in power is largely based on his ability to look powerful. And if he suddenly does not get what he wants, if the terms of the negotiations look like his weakness, then he risks ultimately being overthrown. The interlocutor is confident that Russia will need to cleanse itself of the Putin regime and for this it is necessary to create institutions of the rule of law, property rights. But you know, Russia is not completely doomed, if, for example, Vladimir Karamurza becomes the next president of Russia, I think he will run it as a democracy and he will do it right. There are so many different scenarios for the fall of dictators, Browder added. Despite their outward monolithic appearance, autocratic regimes have a number of weaknesses, says Marcel Dursis, a political scientist and author of the book, How Tyrants Fall. For personalist dictatorships like Putin's regime, the biggest threat typically comes from regime insiders. The less democratic a regime becomes, the more a dictator relies on a very small number of people in order to stay in power. The flip side of that is that Putin could fall if he loses the support of perhaps only a few hundred people. I can't see into the future, but given everything that we know about the way the Russian regime works, as well as the history of the fall of tyrants, the main threat does not come from the masses in the streets, but from those closest to him, said Marcel Dursus.